I'd like to call this meeting to order. If I can have everyone's attention, please. If it, can the people in the back hear us? That's going to be a problem. Uh, Carmen, do we have speakers back there? If I can have everyone please um, be as quiet as possible so the people in the back of the room can hear. I'd like to take a minute and thank everybody to come, for coming out tonight, last minute. We um, really do appreciate this. I'm going to start with some introductions quickly. We have Melissa King right over there. She is our Director of Planning and Zoning. She's going to be filtering the questions tonight. Uh, as we read through them, there's many duplicates. So she's going to kind of weed through them and then direct the questions to the board member or the person up at the dais uh, that it reflects necessary. Uh, Frankie Pretzel is running late. He should be here in about 10 minutes or so. Uh, we have Gia Kassin over here who is the um, assistant to the village manager. We have Carmen Barella who's the village manager. We have, and excuse me, I'm just learning. We have Sean Connor from the health department here. We have Brian Radness and David DeBose um, from Land Use. Myself, Christina Nitsky Troike, the mayor of Homer Glen. Cass Wenlin, the New Lenox Township Supervisor. We have Jennifer Bertino Tarrant, the Will County Executive. And we have Tim Ozing, or I'm sorry, Jim Richmond, Director, or District 4 board member and Steve Ballage, Township Supervisor and Will County District 4 Board Member. So we're gonna start with Melissa, um, start reading off some questions. Um, if you look at the screens above, um, we're just gonna have some, some pictures and stuff. As, as the questions are asked, we're gonna try to find the photo that matches the questions and, and do the best we can. If you're not satisfied after today, we do have to put a time limit on this meeting and we're gonna try to get out of here before nine o'clock. Um, I ask that everyone please be respectful of the questions and the answers. Um, if you have more questions after, you can reach out to the county board. Uh, their next county board meeting is May 18th at 9.30, and the next land use meeting is May 9th at 10 a.m. Melissa, would you mind reading the first question, please? Sure. <clears throat> So we're going to start with some of the more administrative things related to the building permit process and those types of questions. Uh, the first one's pretty simple is the check for the permit was never signed. How can a permit have been issued? Who would that be uh, directed to? Melissa, can you read that again? I, I didn't actually hear you. Check for the permit was never signed. How can a permit have been issued? This is a permit question. The question is uh, the, check. the check was never signed. Mm -hmm. So I guess that would be a question we'd put to the side and... I think that's fine as long as we say we'll get... Well, I mean, how do... If someone's here not to answer it... May I please ask who the check was written to? Well, I don't have that information. So who was the payment... Okay. I can't, my name is David Dubois with the Lane Department. I can't read that from here, but if it was the Homer Township, that may have been to the Highway Commissioner possibly the for the entrance permit. So that would have been the, the township business. That again is required by the Township Highway Commissioner for an entrance permit. Um, there's also, I believe it's a surety bond, or it's a bond that's also required as part of that. But I can't, we can't speak for the township on exactly what's required or what they submitted or what they signed or did not sign, but that appears to be a um, business of the, of the township highway commissioner. Uh, that's the road commissioner. He's not here. Um, well, wait, wait, wait a minute. The road commissioner, I called earlier because somebody asked a question about it, and they said that the uh, normal procedure for them is to get a bond for just the re repairing of the road if something happens to the road that exists now, not for a new road. So that's all that is. And why it's what dollar amount, I don't know, because I didn't ask the road commissioner. Your speakers need to be on. Can't hear the back. Your mic. 
<laughs> Make sure it glows green. You gotta, you gotta push it to be green. Oh, all right. Is that better? No, the uh, road district got a bond for $25,000, and that was, just like Brian said, for building the road going in, the entrance there. And it also covers if the road, the street, gets damaged during their construction of the road going in. That's it. And uh, the, it doesn't cover putting a new street in. So, so what we will do is, with every question, we will write down every question with, with, with whatever answer we receive tonight, and then we will investigate these questions further, because I can understand that that question may not be answered in depth to which it was intended to be answered. So we will follow up with these questions. I don't want any like, open-ended questions here. Some list, oh, sorry. The second question is... Oh, um, Melissa, excuse me for one second. Go ahead. Yes, Brian just checked online with our permit system and the appropriate fees were paid to the county for the site development permit fee. The next question is, um, has the health department signed off? And there's a secondary question kind of related to health department, um, which is kind of surrounds uh, general safety requirements of the health department and if there were any. Um, and what those would be. Good evening, everybody. I'm Sean Connors from Will County Health Department. I'm the Director of Environmental Health Division. Will County Health Department doesn't have any jurisdiction for the licensing or enforcement of any cemetery in Will County. That department, yeah. that department is the Illinois Department of Financial and Professional Regulation. They are the ones that issue the license to have a cemetery. They're the ones that require the application to have a cemetery. They are the department that does the regulation. Why aren't they represented here? Excuse me, we're gonna, we're gonna you know, continue with the questions. I do understand that this is a very tentious you know, situation we have. I just want to be respectful of these people that are up here. We ask them to come here to give as much information as that we can. We don't have, all, I don't have all the answers. I've just found out about this last week. We're doing the best we can to answer questions. I promise if there's any additional questions, please follow up with me and afterwards and I will do the best I can to get the answers for you. If we can please just remember to be respectful of everyone up here. I will answer that for you though. Um, didn't have enough time for other agencies to be represented this evening. The Illinois Department of Financial and Professional Regulations only became aware of this meeting today. Melissa, will you continue on with the next question? I wasn't listening to the part about the state, but I think this might follow up. Is there a burial permit? And that's not through county, right? That would be state? I can speak categorically that the Will County Land Use Department does not issue any permits regarding burials. That again is the purview of the state of Illinois. Do they have to have burial permits from the state before they bury? You know, I don't know if Sean can answer anything on that, but I would actually defer to the state on any permit requirements. Without 100% certainty, I did hear someone in the crowd about the comptroller. They do have some responsibility in that. Um, there is something called the Cemetery Oversight Act, which I'm not trying to be repetitive, but that is enforced by the Illinois Department of Financial and Professional Regulation. The act is available online. Um, I printed it up. It's not incredibly long, but they do address certain issues um, on that where they, I, without speaking for them, because I can't, um, there are a lot of rules about the plots, identifying what's in the plots, landscaping, care of landscaping. There's many different aspects to this act, um, but I can't speak for them and I apologize for that. The cost of the project is listed at $100,000. Why is the bond only 25,000? That would be a question that should be directed to the uh, Township Highway Commissioner. To the who? Township Highway Commissioner. Okay, since, since Brent Portfolio is not here, can you please put that one and then we'll... To have him. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, the permit issued says there's 24,000 square feet of work. I'm assuming that's not what it says. Uh, yet there are already bulldozers digging at least five acres in. Who's monitoring this and who's inspecting the job site? I think it means 24,000 graves. Burials, that's what I Burials, think too. Yeah. So it's a little confusing. No? 24,000. I, I, I understand, I, trust me, if, if your property backs up to it, we're all invested into it too. We, we want to help you. Um, the 20, I, I guess I don't understand the question again. 24,000. So the card says 24,800 square feet of area, I would assume, yet there are already bulldozers digging at least five acres in I see now who's monitoring and who inspects job site uh, I'm Brian Radner from the land use department I think I can address this question the 20 the reference to the 24,800 square feet is impervious area the actual area of disturbance is larger and it is contained within the area that you see with the um, erosion control measures so the county's permit for 24,800 is the impervious area of the property, which will be included like the access aisle and any other impervious surface, uh, such as pavement and parking spaces. Burials will be scheduled sun up to sundown per their religion. Can the township do something for the residents to avoid funerals all day long? Melissa, can you repeat the question for Mr. Balich? Burials will be scheduled sun up to sundown. Can the township do something for the residents to avoid funerals all day long? I don't know the answer to that one. I don't know how they're going to bury people, and I don't know how many people are going to come there each day or each month. I think the question is, she's asking if you can limit the hours of when they have their services or burials or whatnot. Is the, the township hours, permitted? The hours have not even been discussed anywhere. The first time that we found out about this was last Thursday. And the information we got is a lot of information in a short time. And I thank all these people for coming out. But uh, no, I don't know the answer to that. I'll take an attempt. Um, it is a question that should be directed to the Illinois Department of Financial Professional Regulation because it is in their act. They would be considered a religious um, exemption because it's a religious cemetery. And I think there's certain rules that I don't know right now, and I apologize to everyone in the room, where you can limit or not limit about certain customs. The entrance of the cemetery was damaged from heavy equipment. The road width has been compromised. The entrance is on a hill to the north. It seems like a safety factor. I guess, will this be addressed? Yeah, the, uh, the road was damaged and the uh, road commissioner went out there and they're fixing the road where it was damaged and the uh, bond is gonna cover some of that if they don't pay. But I don't see why they wouldn't pay because they, they'll stop the project, but don't pay, I would assume. But they've got to fix the road, pay for fixing the road. This might be a good question for you, Brian, I think. So a um, couple questions about why they weren't notified, why residents weren't notified. Uh, the county regulations do not require uh, notification to surrounding property owners for permitted uses. The cemetery is a permitted use in the residential R2A zoning classification, and the development of the site does not require notification to adjoining property owners. So yeah, the, the permitted activity is permitted by right and does not require notification under state statute or county ordinance. <coughs> yeah. To follow up with... 24,000 burial site facility and we're not notified of that? Wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you have, this property is owned at your home. I am the adjoining north fence line to the whole 39 acres. And I was not notified of our two zoning, which is residential, 
which I understand 10 acres is supposed to be developed. Why was I not given a letter? My, my entire farm, I'm a third generation owner of this farm all the way down the Chicago Bloomington Trail and no notification whatsoever. There's two properties behind me that adjoin this cemetery and we were not notified. What's this gonna do to my land? My land is still in crop production and it's an EHS, highly erodible soil. What's this excavation gonna do to my land? So, I just want to remind everybody that, that ma'am, that was a great question, and, and I support that question, and I, I want answers for you. I truly do. I just want to remind everyone that the people up here are, are staff members. They don't, we don't, oh, I'm sorry, this, over this way. <laughs> they're, they're staff members. They came voluntarily to try to help and answer as many questions as they can. I want to get that answer for you. I believe they all want to get this answer for you, and, and we will get that answer for you the best we can. Mm -hmm. But it took the whole entire community, and my family has been there for 75 years on that farm, okay? That road is named after my grandfather. It took this whole entire community, and I appreciate all of you coming out tonight. But you people supposedly had no clue, permits were issued and everything, and nobody was notified in the area. Shame on you. Hi, I'm Cass Wendland. I'm New Lenox Township Supervisor. We're in the adjoining township, but not only am I a supervisor of the adjoining township, but I live in Rossmore Estates at the most northerly point. Um, I couldn't be any closer except for this lady that just spoke. And the difficulty, and I ex agree with all of what you're saying, a lot of what's been said, but I think we really need to get, get to the issue here, okay? And the issue is a land use issue. And the issue is why? It's a cemetery. Why is a religious assembly? Why are these things permitted uses as a matter of right in any residential category, in any agricultural ca category of zoning? Why aren't they special uses? Because if they were a special use, okay, and there's a way that can be done. If they were a special use, you'd all get notification, not all of you, it would be posted anyway, it would be public, published, you as an adjoining owner would get notice, I wouldn't because I'm a property away, but everyone would get that notice, it would be heard before the Will County Planning and Zoning Commission, it would be heard by Homer Township, and Homer Township's Plan Commission, which, and I'm telling you the issue at hand, okay, because I know it very deeply, again, I, I'm, I'm gonna be able to see this, okay? I know it's right next door to you, but I can still see it from my backyard, okay? So, and I have to drive out into Blodgett Meter Road, the same thing as you do. I have those same concerns. But if this community, all of us, want to do something about it, it has to be done at the county board level, okay, so that these uses aren't permitted uses in residential categories or agricultural categories anymore as a matter of right, so that they're special uses. The only way that can happen is if the Will County Zoning Ordinances is amended. And I'm not talking about a map amendment for one parcel. I'm talking about a text amendment that pulls cemeteries, religious assemblies, community centers, all of these intense uses that should be located on county roads, county travel roads, or US routes, roads made for it, into special uses, and that has to be done by a text amendment, by actually changing the text of the Will County Zoning Ordinance, and that can only be done by the Will County Board, and then ultimately that would go to the Will County Executive. That's the only way it can be done. And so while I appreciate all these other concerns, I absolutely do, I share them, okay? Again, I travel that road every day, okay? I look directly out of my house to there where I've lived for 20 years. And if we all want to get together and we want to do something, we need to take our energies collectively 
to the county board and say, these uses should not be permitted uses as a matter of right. They should only be special uses. And we need, and we ask that the county board start the process of a text, T-E-X-T, -E text amendment to that ordinance, zoning ordinance, so these are all special uses. So there is notification. And not just so there's notification. If they were a special use, the county board, the county executive could sign it, could place, the land use department can recommend it, can place conditions on any use. They may limit the size, the amount of burials. They may decide that you can't put, do it on a road unless the road's sufficiently built for it. They may put all kinds of conditions on there. I've been a land use lawyer for almost 30 years, or over 30 years now, getting older, and they do it all the time. But what it's gonna take is a text amendment to the Will County Zoning Ordinance, and that's the only thing that's gonna change anything. How do we get the text that has to start with our county board members. So, wait. I think Jim, Jim Richmond. Now, where's. Well, I, I, I will address that also, okay? Uh, my neighborhood, and I heard it out the door, my neighborhood, we live in there in Rossmore Estates, is a very diverse neighborhood. We like it. We have neighbors of different colors, of different religions, including Islamic neighbors. They're fantastic neighbors. They have beautiful homes. They take care of them beautifully. They're great neighbors. They're helpful neighbors. They're supportive neighbors. What this is about, and what every person in this room is here about, is the fact that you're going to put 24,000 burial sites on a 40-acre parcel, dumping them on to a rural country road, and then build a religious assembly building on there on this residentially zoned property with no further input, no further conditions, et cetera. And it wouldn't marry if it was Presbyterian or Methodist or Baptist. It's the same issue. <laughs> Can I have a clarification made sure. about whether or not the text amendment process could assist retroactively? I think the public should hear this. That would be for Cass again. I'm sorry. He's having a side convo. <laughs> uh, Melissa, Melissa, will you readdress that question? I think it's important for the public to understand whether or not that text amendment will retroactively be able to be applied to this situation? Well, the question is, in this instance, is how much of it's actually begun to be used for that purpose? And is the yet undeveloped portion of the property, which is the majority of it, would any text amendment apply, apply to that? That would go to the Will County State's Attorney to ask to answer that question. Sure. But we sure as heck should find out. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, Jim, if you were the one that yeah. would handle this, All right, so, so So uh, this is, um, Renee, you and I spoke. Uh, last Friday, I met with Brian, and Brian shared with me the matrix. I'm not on land use, I'm on the finance side. Uh, Brian shared with me the matrix, and we looked across what, the, what was permitted, and a cemetery is permitted, I would say, in just about all of the zoning categories. Correct, Brian? And after I got done with that meeting, it was probably quarter to 11 or so, by 11 o'clock, I was on the phone with Frankie, and I said, you know what, I've just been made aware of this, that cemeteries and that are in every category, and that needs to be changed. That needs to be changed to a special use. That conversation has been had, and I've asked Frankie to put it on his agenda. And may, Frankie, maybe you can tell me, it, I'm, I'm assuming it's gonna be on your agenda. Okay. Just. We're gonna get it added to an agenda oh. as soon as possible. Yeah. It's on. So there, there were some questions that I received earlier, and I would like Melissa, if you can touch base on exactly that. Um, people had asked, do Homer, do, does Homer Glen allow for cemeteries in our two districts? Can you please touch on that just a little bit? So under our zoning ordinance, within our corporate limits, um, cemeteries are a special use in E1, E2, all of the R districts, A1, and then they're actually prohibited in A2. And they're also prohibited in all the C districts, I1 and P1. 
but so, that does not apply to this case because that's that's our own zoning code. Uh, right, that's where some confusion is coming in. Uh, some residents think that this particular property is in Homer Glen. It's it's in Homer Township, so that's why the rules of Homer Glen do not apply to this property. Just to clarify, this is a Homer Township property that lies within Will County, which has to go by the Will County rules. Go ahead, pass. Um, but feeding off of what the mayor just said. That they, she just told you that that's what the village of Homer Glen's ordinance says. That means the text of their ordinance says that. That means the text of the ordinance for the county could fall along the same lines. It's the text of the ordinance that needs to change. And it needs to change quickly. The township doesn't have zoning ordinances. The township merely recommends to the county whether to uh, pass or not pass a particular request for rezoning. No, that didn't happen here, okay? Because we're talking about a permitted use as to the overall zoning ordinance of the county that was adopted years ago. So no special request went before the township for this cemetery, okay, to make a recommendation. And they are only a recommended body. So. You know, when I add to that, uh, we talked with Chairman Ogala, the, she's the chair of the Will County Board, and she said that she will definitely make it on the agenda. And so it'll go on, it will go on Frankie's meeting that's coming up on May 9th, that's the date, at 10.30 a.m. at the 302 North Chicago. And uh, if you come to that meeting, you'll hear that we're trying to do something about it. But Cass is 100% right, it has to come from the county board. And Brian, when I talked with him, he said he, we have to research it and make sure that we can legally do it. And he, we, th that'll happen right after our meeting. Well, you know, when we talk about le being able to legally do it, and I understand that ultimately the Will County State's Attorney makes a recommendation to the Will County Board, but ultimately whether they pass or adopt an ordinance amending the text of their zoning ordinance is up to those 26 county board members that are sitting up there, okay? And if they have to defend that ordinance or that change in that ordinance, that's what we all pay taxes for, to the Will County State's Attorney to defend that ordinance. So. So I heard a question, when is that meeting? Again, the land use meeting is May 9th. Steve, you said 10.30, is it 10 or 10.30? 10.30. Okay, and then the uh, county board meeting is May 18th at 9.30. Well, we're all here and we're all, gonna, we're all gonna make some phone calls tomorrow, I'm sure. Do you want me to? If you want to continue with the next question. Oh, yeah. There's quite a few questions still yep. up here. Um, so I guess feeding off of what we were just discussing, um, there's a couple of questions about um, if there's second phases to this, construction of the building, um, will that require notification? Does that require special use currently? Not currently, it does not. And I'm not any happier about that than anybody else in this room. Um, do you, so, it depends on what the request is. So there are certain activities where you could put up a building and it would be permitted by right without notification to property owners. There are other uh, scenarios that if they go in a different direction and want to add a use that requires a zoning change or a special use permit, then that would follow the normal uh, notification to surrounding property owners. This is a general question. I'm not sure how pertinent this is, but you could probably still answer it, Brian. It just says, uh, Will County Land Use Department has stated on a phone call that um, they want more commercial business in Will County. Is that correct? I can't answer that question. I don't know where that came from. I don't either. So. What was the question? So there's a couple questions about, um, will the cemetery be fenced? Uh, or be walled in? Um, are there uh, trees screening, uh, potentially permeable parking, parking areas, those types of things related to the actual site construction? 
so there is landscaping included with this uh, proposal and this development and it, the screening is showed uh, along the access drive uh, that ends in a cul-de-sac uh, temporarily um, with future expansion that would be removed. Uh, and then there's screening along uh, Meter Road. So that's, uh, and, and there's some fencing too. Uh, there is not a county fencing requirement, but they are putting up some fencing along the front, at least in the proposal. And the county does not require a permit for a fence, so that could also be erected and we wouldn't even know. Now, if there are other regulations uh, in the state that require fencing, then that uh, state agency would have to regulate that. Well, he's, he's going to answer. He's going to answer that question. I'm sorry. Within the FOIA process, we have to follow state law for the Freedom of Information Act. Within that act, there are certain exemptions. Um, one of those exemptions from disclosure are architectural engineering drawings prepared with um, private funds not associated with a public project. In this particular instance, these funds are private. They're expended on a private project and are then um, subject to that exemption and cannot be disclosed. Engineering. They're administratively reviewed as, as part of a permitted use. Um, so yes, they are part of the permit process, but again, they're exempt under the Freedom of Information Act from disclosure. Is the public allowed to come and view them as long as they are not given away? I believe they can be viewed, but can't be copied. Is that correct? That's, you know, that's something we can export to the state's attorney's office to make sure that we're in compliance with the FOIA Act. But that again, that's a question we'll ask the state's attorney's office to see if we can make accommodation. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this one says, uh, it appears prior to 2018 that cemeteries were not permitted in residential areas. And did that change? So I guess I, has it always been this way where they were permitted in our districts? Prior to, uh, essentially the, the cemeteries have been permitted uses in unincorporated areas in agricultural and residential zoning classifications and one commercial zoning classification since before 2012. Um, prior to that, they were, prior to that date in 2012, they were a special use in two zoning classifications. So when the zoning ordinance was updated, there was an overall comprehensive update in 2012 and the use was included in other categories. So this was, uh, Cass, you kind of talked about this changing the text amendments. There's a question about um, changing, the, uh, changing the code. Um, and then in general for to regulate this, there's also a question about prohibiting it altogether. Brian has sort of addressed this, and he yeah, just, I just for yeah, the record. yeah, he really did, and so that tells you that prior to 2012, it was neither a permitted nor a special use in most categories. Correct, Brian? It was a special use in the estate and residential one classification, and that's all. According to the research that I could find, that's what I saw. So two categories, special use only, notification, opportunity for conditions, and after 2012, permitted in almost every category. So that gives you some idea of whether a text amendment can, can, be, can be made. It was before. Is there anything that can prevent um, this landowner from buying remaining land nearby and expanding? That's a question we can't answer, so. Okay. 
I'm happy to answer that question. Okay, as a land use lawyer for over 30 years, as of right now, there, no, there's nothing stopping him from doing that. It's a permitted use. Um, so, Brian, the zoning for a funeral home is the same for cemetery? The or is zoning, it different? The zoning for a funeral home is a little different. A funeral home by itself, like a standalone funeral home, requires commercial zoning. And this property does not have commercial zoning. So a funeral home by itself is not a permitted use in this zoning classification of this facility. It is a permitted use in other county zoning facilities, but uh, districts, but they are commercial zone districts. So the first part of this question is about transport of bodies, and that can only happen from a funeral home, I guess. I, I'm not sure if this is accurate. It says by law. Um, it said, so I guess they're trying to ask the question the way it's stated is kind of odd. Uh, like, will they be able to transport from outside, or are they relying on being able to build that funeral home on site? Do you know the answer to this question? That's not a land use matter. I think that question needs to be directed towards um, the funeral powers and, and the cemetery themselves. I believe there are rules of transportation of human remains. I'm not aware of what they are. But they could be coming from off-site. Potentially? Well, at this point, it would have to be. It would have to be coming from offsite. No building. So there's a number of questions about traffic, and I know I think we've answered a few of these, but there's just a lot of questions about um, how it will be handled, how often, like how much, uh, how many funerals there will be every day, uh, if you even know that, um, is the widening of Parker and Hadley Road uh, nearby to accommodate this type of use. Um, were there, was there parking looked at? Are there parking needs? So. Uh, parking was looked at and it is addressed on site. So there'll be parking on site, just like pretty much the majority of cemeteries that have parking along the drive aisles. Uh, that's how this facility is designed. Uh, if there is future expansion and there's uh, a building added, then additional parking requirements will come into play. But as it's designed now, uh, it meets the parking requirements for this area and this use. Uh, the total um, development is, although the site development permit does cover, the fee does cover five acres, the impervious area is under 25,000 square feet. So that's with respect to the parking. Now, what was the other part of that question? Uh, Oh, Township Road and Improvements, Correct. Uh, yeah. that is under uh, the Homer Township Highway Commissioner, so I have no idea if they have any intent to do any improvements to this road in the future. They did approve the access to the site, so they did grant access for cemetery use. Homer Township did do that. We cannot issue a permit until that is done, and they did do that. And um, we took a look at the chip trip generation figures for this type of use. And it, it, it's two to three people a day, non-funeral non related, so visitors. So it's actually a very low intense use outside of a funeral. There's a follow up of how many cars would that be equivalent to? Two to three trips a day. No, how many cars are gonna be in the parking lot? Um, I could during take a funeral? A, Do you mean during no, a funeral? Allotted cars. How many are allotted for that parking? How many parking spaces? It said 21. Did it? Can that change the 21 parking spaces or whatever? The, the site plan shows a, a little more than 25, plus there's parking available in the cul-de-sac where the access drive in, so. Can, can that change? Can they have additional? Can they, it's, I mean, if they, the problem is with this site is that they're only approved for under 25,000 square feet of parking and it has to be on a dust-free surface such as gravel or pavement. So any more additional pavement or 
impervious surface will require stormwater management, and this group was not ready to take that next step of development. You're saying at this time they're not ready to do that? That's what they told us. That's yeah. correct. But, so my question is, how could you have 25 parking spots and not have drainage? Or have a because the Will County Stormwater Management Ordinance and Water Resource Ordinance is very clear that development under 25,000 square feet does not require stormwater management. For this type of use, uh, along with many other uses, parking is to be on the site where the, where the facility is at. Uh, so no off-street parking should be permitted, but you know, that's going to be up to the Highway Commissioner and the Sheriff to enforce. Okay. Is, there a, is there a drainage plan for this that, that's so-called being constructed right now? That is, there, there is drainage, there is not a stormwater management facility included with the development, but there are drainage pathways uh, that make sure that the water continues on the path that it's supposed to flow, how it flows now. So that, that place, when it rains excessively, that place where the so-called creek or the little waterway comes in, that road floods. That road floods. So why isn't, why isn't there, if, if this was permitted to go in and be excavated already, why wasn't there drainage put in there to alleviate that on the roadside? Wait. We're going to go with one, excuse me, we're going to do one question at a time. I don't mind the, the civility we have, one question, it's fine, but when there's multiple questions coming at, at us, yeah, we're going to we're going to redirect the questions back to Melissa. If you want to answer the question she had about the drainage, Brian, feel free. Yeah, the drainage was reviewed by our professional engineer and it meets the engineering requirements to issue the permit. And then to to bring the questions back, Melissa, um, Highway Commissioner Brett Porfilio had arrived. If you want to, if you can, if you can go back to the original two questions, if you have those accessible. Gia. Or if anyone can bring them back. Or, or ask another question and then find those and get those questions answered. The check, I think, yeah, it was a check question. There was a, a check um, shown by yeah, someone I'll, in the audience that wasn't signed. I can just get a couple of minutes. I'll, get, I'll, I'll tell everybody the history of what, what happened with the, with the permit. So a gentleman by the name of Omar came to the road district and requested an access permit from the road district. In order to get an access permit from the road district, you need three things. You got to give me a, a bond, $25,000 surety bond. Secondly, you got to give me a certificate of insurance. But most importantly, Will County has to approve your development before I give you access. So from what I was told, Will County Land Use Department gave them approval from what we were told, mm -hmm. and they provide a certificate of insurance and a surety bond. From what you're told? Or what but another question that we asked Omar was, were there be any structures on the property or buildings? And they said no. Now, from what I've read, there might be. So if that's, well, then there's a problem. Well, then there's a problem. Excuse me. You guys, I'm trying my best here. We let, let, let Mr. Profilio finish answering the question. So the access permit is just to bring an excavator and a bulldozer to their property, and that's it. And any damage done to my road, I'm using the surety bond if there's damage. That's what the $25,000 surety bond is for. But most importantly, I don't give any permits until Will County approves it first. And they said the land use department provided them with permit. Did you see the permit when you issued your permit? Did you take their word or did you have proof? Um, Dave is on his way with the backup we have at the road district. Perfect. He's going to be here in about 10 minutes. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, another thing that... <laughs> I think I brought up in Mr. Balich is, I don't believe the Planning Commission for the Township even saw this case. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know, I think we have jurisdiction. There was no case. There was no case. There was, there was no case? There was no case. But the reason that we didn't see it at the Township is because it's a permitted right, so it didn't go to any public meetings. We didn't even find out about it until last Thursday. We're talking about, um, what, four days now or five days? 
That's why it didn't go to our planning commission. I didn't hear about it till last month when they came in for the permit. And, and there's no parking in my right of way, by the way. It's for them. Yeah, it's for them to have access to Meter Road. For construction or yes, for but there's but it's only to bring in a, a dozer and an excavator. If they bring in loads of dirt, they don't have a permit for that. So if they're building it, so so if they're putting together a building or something else like that that they lied to me about, I'm pulling the permit. Melissa, was there another question for the highway department? Come up to the mic, I can't hear you. Is there any other ones? Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> was the what? He, so he answered the question. Oh. It's an access permit to, the, to Meter Road. For construction. For to bring a dozer and a, and a, a, a backhoe to their site. It's not to bring in trucks of dirt or anything else like that. That was not part of it. They said they're not constructing any buildings. That's it. Well, I wouldn't have gave it to them unless they gave you more information, but they said they weren't building a building. So, you know what I'm saying? So that's where it ends. So as far as I'm concerned, they're just bringing in on a trailer the two pieces of equipment, and they're using that to dig graves or whatever, and that's it. If, if they're not doing work in my right of way, I don't have jurisdiction on private property. I just have jurisdiction within my right of way. And if they're violating my permit, that's a problem. Are, are you Homer Glen or Homer Township? I'm Homer Township Road District. Meter Road is my right of way. So the question is, is who's monitoring how much equipment they bring in or what they're doing on the property? Is that township? Is that county? Who, who's supposed to be making sure that they're there, doing everything correctly? There's load limits on the roadway. That's enforced by the county, the county uh, the sheriff. They have jurisdiction if there's a load limit, uh, exceeding a load limit. So if you're bringing in trucks full of dirt that are, I don't know, 20, 25 tons, that's exceeding the load limit. Okay, if it gets past the sheriff and it's on your property, then who says that it's wrong? Yeah, I, it ends at, at my right-of-way. Whatever they do on their property, when it's off my right-of-way, I don't have any jurisdiction. Land use department is in charge of that on the private property. Who in land use is doing inspections on the site? We don't need a name, but who, which yeah, department who, yeah, directly? Yeah, which department? The Development Services Division engineering team does the inspections for the earthwork related activity and the uh, erosion control. The landscaping will be reviewed by the planning staff. Can you say who, who, is, who is that again? Development Services Division. And engineering. And engineering. Was this one? Melissa, was there another question for the highway department? He, so, um, Brent answered this question, kind of. It seems like it might be on the books that the, the bond was 25,000, but the cost of the permit was 100, and so there, the public was asking for clarification on why it was only 25,000. Well, uh, we're reconstructing Meter Road this year. We're starting in a few weeks. Question. Oh, the 25,000 is for base failure from their trucks, but they're only bringing them in one time. They're not running dozers and trailers every single day. It's one loading and that's it. They're coming into the site, that's it. The problem comes in when you have repetitive loadings, like I said, with your bringing in clay or bringing in dirt or hauling it out. That I don't want. But if it's only one time, it's not a big issue. And that's what the surety bond is for, is if there's any damage created to the right of way, I'm using that 25,000 to fix it. That's why we have it. And the certificate of insurance covers liability. But land use department supposedly approved it. So that's, 
If they didn't, then the permit's no good. I'm pulling it. So it was that, is that true or not? The land use department provided approval. It, the permit was issued by the department on February 3rd, 2023. Okay. I believe that was the same day that you granted approval to access the site based last on month. records. Last month. Yeah, last month they came in. That was in March, the end of March. It wasn't in March or Feb January or February, no. Either way, either way if, if land use approved it, that's the doorway that's got to be open for me to give them the, the permit for the surety bond and for the uh, certificate of insurance. That's it. But there's restrictions, like I said. If the guy lied to me and he's not following what he told me he's going to do for the permit, there's going to be a problem. I'm going to pull it. If somebody reports, I'm not going to sit there 24-7. If somebody reports it or takes a picture and shows it to me, then, then I'm going to approach the guy. <laughs> oh boy. He approved it January 12th and you approved it in February? But he approved it in January? Oh. Yeah, I don't want it to be a blame game, you know, I just... Look at that load. No, that's not a permit. That's not a permit. Bullshit! That's my property. I'm going to have to um, continue on with the meeting. If, if, Mr. Porfilio, if you can provide them with your email information and they can email you with everything that they have. Melissa, can you continue with the next question? So I have a few, this has already been asked, um, more environmental questions. So I've broken them up into some subject areas, although these kind of, I guess, overlap each other a little bit. So this is probably best for uh, you, Brian, I think, if regarding maybe the stormwater ordinance. So there's some questions, not just about drainage, but will it affect the watershed? Um, are they allowed to bury like in wet areas or near the creek? Um, were there soil perk tests done or required? Um, will it affect water table? Um, soil test. I, I think most environmental of, studies. So yeah. those are kind of they're repeated over and over in a number of these. So I think that kind of generally speaking, the secondary set of questions I have is about wells. And I think that's something that should be answered second to this. But I think first, the questions on like the surface, this is really a lot of environmental study per test, uh, watershed concerns. And I think that if we can answer that one first. All right, so when we talk about the site in storm water, which is the runoff of water on top of the property. It's reviewed, it's prepared by a professional engineer to the county specs, whatever the ordinance requires. And then we have our engineering staff, including a professional engineer, review the documents that were submitted. That was what happened in this case. They submitted a plan that was prepared by a professional engineer. It was approved by our engineering staff and our professional engineers showing that it meets the draining requirements associated with the water resource ordinance and this Will County Stormwater Management Ordinance. So there's no mitigation plan whatsoever for this? I don't even know what that means. They're all the same. No, that's an inaccurate statement. They have to be responsible for drainage. Under the ordinance, that, that is absolutely required. So that has been reviewed, and under Illinois law, the lower property takes the water from the higher property, okay? 
So wherever the water was flowing before is going to continue to flow. That is under Illinois law, under Illinois drainage law. Okay. It's been reviewed and approved by our engineering staff, who is a professional engineer certified and issued a license by the state of Illinois. The drainage matter does comply with the zoning code. Any additional impervious surface, meaning more than 25,000 square feet, will trigger stormwater management to retain some of the water on site and slow the release. So that will be looked at if it does occur. We're gonna, we're gonna address the well water questions shortly or at least attempt to. I think I've heard this a couple times now. Can you clarify the size of the overall site? I believe the entire parcel is about 40 acres. acres. That's what the Plata survey shows. Right, okay. so I think I heard twice somebody say five, and so I just want so to clarify. the initial permit that was issued by the department and the $2,500 fee paid to the land use department before the permit could be issued covers up to five acres of development. But that means disturbance of the ground. It doesn't mean the final impervious area. It means where earth is moved, okay? So if it was more than five acres of development, then the fee would be a little bit more. I mean, they certainly could do more if they wanted to, but they can't do more than 25,000 square feet of pavement, permeable pavers, gravel. That's the limiting factor of why it's under 25,000. But the movement of the dirt, the dirt could be they can move all 40 acres if they wanted to, and they paid for it mm -hmm. under the permit. But right now, that only covers the front five acres and then all of the, um, um, the erosion control up and down the property, which is required under ordinance. Okay. Can I ask a question? You say it's below the surface the land is five acres, correct? On permit. Is that what you're telling me, right? The actual movement of dirt, the actual no, movement of no, dirt no, is no, on. That's square feet. That's under an acre. Yes, I know. So why are you to keep on saying five acres? Because that is the impervious surface. I'm trying to focus on hard, permeable, or impermeable surface, pavement, concrete. So they already have permits for the parking lot? They, they've been issued an entire permit to develop the parking, the, the road that accesses the property. That is that hard surface that is impervious is what is included in the 24,800. The, uh, the fee covers up to five acres of moving dirt. How come we can't gain access to that permit? We submitted a FOIA and all we received was an effort to get access to that permit. Why is it coming out? Under the FOIA law, again, there are certain exemptions of material that are not allowed to be disclosed. And that would include, again, engineering drawings, for example, or architectural drawings and things of that nature, again, that are paid for with private funds and not associated with a public project. For example, though, if this was a public project, then we would disclose them because they were paid for with public funds. If, if I may, what we just heard from the land use department, thanks for the information, Brian, thanks Dave, is that a site development permit was issued for five acres of a 39.2 acre site, okay? And what we also know, because we've heard, is that the text of this ordinance was changed around 2012, okay? What we also know, we also heard, is that the prior version of the ordinance, the prior text, only allowed cemeteries as a special use in only two categories and that that was changed as a matter of the entire ordinance in 2012. Now again what we want and I say we because I live here okay I, this is my neighborhood I live here we have our two county board representatives that represent this area with us I can tell you I've spoken to them they support us. We have chair of the land use committee from the adjoining district here. He chairs the land use committee where that would be heard, okay? He wasn't even there in 2012, okay? But what we do know is that a text amendment is needed to the entire Will County Zoning Ordinance in order to get done what we want to get done. And if we want to in any have any chance of limiting further development beyond that initial five acres. And so I'd really, really implore all of you 
And because again, I'm, I'm telling myself that this is what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to, and I already have, speak to these county board members, follow up, and ask them to proceed with the process it would take for a text amendment to the Will County Zoning Ordinance. So at least, at least, as to the balance of this 39.2 acres, that there's input, that there's conditions, that it gets a chance to get, be considered by the Homer Township Board, by the Will County Planning and Zoning Commission, by the Land Use Committee of the County Board, as well as the full County Board, and ultimately the County Executive. That's what we need, and I really ask you, and I implore you to keep your focus on that, because the issue here, again, is putting a 24,000 grave cemetery, dumping it on, to a small rural township road, not meant for it, not built for it, and please keep your focus on this, what well, can actually fix our problems. Well, let me, hold your, we've already, Jim Richmond is a counterpart with me at District 4. We've already talked to Frankie, the head of land use, and I'm repeating myself, but everyone needs to hear it. The chairman of the board is going to put it on an agenda so we can move forward with it. We can't move forward with it without a vote, and the vote will happen because it's going to go to the county board. So no, that's going to happen. So all the, we keep hearing about a tax amendment, and Cass is 100% right. Me and Jim talked on the phone for about an hour about how we could go about doing this. And we came up with an answer. I called up Brian Radner, and he said, yeah, we, we could do it. We have to make sure it's legal. That's the only thing he told me. And from what it sounds like, it is legal. But we can't go forward at the county board to do anything to, until we change the text amendment. We have to get, get it where it's not allowed as a permitted right. We, we might be able to get it done in a month or a month and a half. I don't, it's hard to tell because we have, it's going to go on the uh, land, use, land use committee this coming Tuesday. May 9th. And then, then it's going to go from there to, I, I don't know, does it have to go to the executive committee from land use? No, not necessarily. Then it'll go to the full county board at the uh, next meeting, which will be the third Thursday. May 18th and then it would go for a vote there. And then it has to, there, but wait a minute, there, when they do that, if I'm not mistaken, don't we need a public hearing? Yeah. The matter, oh, there's a, go ahead and explain no, the, the public the, hearing to the, me. The matter is assigned from the Executive Committee to the Land Use and Development Committee. At the Land Use and Development Committee, they'll review the text, and if they're okay with it, then they will send it to public hearing at the Planning and Zoning Commission. At the Planning and Zoning Commission, there'll be opportunity for public comment and review. Those comments will then be transmitted back to the committee for review, then they will forward their recommendation to the full board for a vote on any text changes. And it cannot be in this, if you have to have, 20, your, your land use meeting is on, what day? May 9th. Okay, we have to that. Okay, <laughs> it's not there. So technically, the first executive committee is Thursday. They would not be able to put it on the agenda by this Thursday so it could move to the uh, land use committee unless the chair made the uh, decision to bypass that executive committee. And truthfully, I don't know what is in the county board rules to do that. So, I mean... A month is ideal, but the re reality of is it, you know, it, it's that will not be. And you have to understand too that even if they do change, um, if they do change to add a special permit to, moving forward, um, it doesn't mean it automatically stops. County board will then just have to listen to each case because it is a, you know, it is a special use permit. Well, first, uh, did you have anything to add? No, the, you know, just as with any applicant, provided they have the appropriate permits in place um, to, with, for their entitlement and they're following the, the codes of the county, they can proceed. Margaret? Thank
You know about this historical site, right? You know about that historical site, I'm okay. Mar Margaret, I, I appreciate your sentiments. We, we have about a half hour left of this meeting, and I really want to get to the well questions. It, you, you're more than welcome to pass that around. Um, just, just to add to what Margaret said, thank you. Thank you, Margaret. So to, to, to what she said, To what she said, that is exactly why we're here. We're from Homer Glen, Homer Township, the Highway Department, Will County. Th that's why we're here. Uh, we, we wanted to have this meeting to bring everyone together because we know this affects you guys and, and we wanna help. That, that's essentially why we are here. Um, I would've invited the trustees tonight as well, but it, we have the violation of the Open Meetings Act, so unfortunately I couldn't have them up here as well, but we're, we're just here to help the, the neighbors and our residents. Uh, Melissa, can we, can we move on to the well, questions, please. Yes. Um, for all, I just remember you, Sean. Oh, in the health department. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, 
There was one of the questions was, were any borings done or any soil well, yeah, variation? Yeah, soil per test. The answer to that is no. None were done. None are required by our department because we do not have jurisdiction over this matter. I did, excuse me, let me please, I will just let me just stop for a second. It's a long answer. It's a complex answer. There's a lot of variables and I apologize. Um, I did call the Illinois Department of Financial and Professional Regulations on this matter and I asked them emphatically, is there any environmental studies in the act and their application process for a project of this nature? And the answer is there is not. Okay, so I did ask that question and that was the answer that's given. I consulted with the Illinois I consulted with the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency and the Illinois Department of Public Health on this matter as well, just to see if they had any jurisdiction or any advice on the matter. <clears throat> Illinois Environmental Protection Agency does have jurisdiction over groundwater. In discussions with them and other research that I've done in the time frame that I've been given, this type of burial is probably the greenest way you can go very low risk for contamination if certain things are met. There's a lot of variables. For example, soil type, depth to the aquifer. Um, is there, what is the depth or width of the unsaturated layer from the surface to the aquifer, the pH of the soil? There's a lot of different factors that need to be addressed. Um, I've spoken to, Dozens of the citizens, maybe some of you are in the room, I'm sure, um, referenced some, stu um, some, <clears throat> some reports. There's one from the World Health Organization that's been brought up. I read through. Um, some of the information is really good. Some of it's lacking. They admit that some of the information is lacking and some of their data. Um, but the general conclusion of that report is that a cemetery of this nature um, has a very low risk to the groundwater if all conditions are, are met. Another thing that I did research was the Illinois Water Well Construction Code. And also the, um, forgive me, I have it here. The Illinois, the Illinois Groundwater Protection Act. And in both those codes and acts, there is no reference for a setback for cemeteries. In the, water, the Illinois Water Well Construction Code, there's various listings of setbacks. So if I was to look at it as I did, I would probably consider it in a primary or secondary source contamination, and that's a 75 foot setback. So what that means is your private well has to be at least 75 feet from the cemetery property line. It's not much different than your septic fields. If we strip away some of the cultural differences, religious differences, and get down to the chemistry and biology of the issue. It's not an apples to apples, but it's pretty close to how we treat our sewage in our private homes with a septic field. So that's the information I have for you for this evening. Do, do any other areas have setbacks? I did a little research. I looked in Indiana and I looked in Missouri, I didn't get a chance to check Wisconsin, and none of them have setbacks for cemeteries. Now they have different setbacks, so I thought Missouri was a little more conservative on some of their setbacks. Some of their setbacks were 300 feet for certain things. Mm -hmm. um, where Indiana and Illinois were more similar to one another. So there's, I, I think there's a lot of people in this room that have probably done their own research, and, and they might have some information too. I am, as some of you know, I'm open to any phone call. I'll talk to you for any length of time that I can to try to answer your questions. There was a gentleman in the back that had his hand raised. It. I'm a licensed wastewater operator in Illinois. Uh, I spoke with the EPA earlier today. They got the conclusion. Would you mind stepping up to the microphone if you can make your way up here? Let the gentleman through. <laughs> Well, first, first of all, I want to say I hope that there's a way we can come to a mutual agreement here. I know everybody's kind of upset, um, but I feel bad for both parties here because obviously there's people here that just want to figure out where to bury their loved ones, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just, I want to put that out there. 
Um, but I, like I said, I'm a licensed water wastewater operator. Um, I spoke to the EPA earlier today. I needed to for my license anyways and brought this matter up and they put me to the um, Department of Groundwater Protection Program. Um, there is, in fact, some setbacks for cemeteries for wells. That's the federal EPA that regulates that. May I just, I don't mean to be, uh, talk over you or interrupt. Do you know who you spoke to? Um, it's in my email. I'd, I'd have to look it up, but I'm, I, we no, can I would just, afterwards. No, you know, I, yeah, because I, um, I talked to another individual, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, I spoke to them earlier today about this. Um, this is studying that's very much in its infancy that started somewhere around COVID. I can tell you that stuff in the state outside of just the bacterial component that we have here, there's ionization problems that come from decomposition of bodies that are close to well, you know, once they reach the well aquifer and continue, that causes problem of further treatment of wells into the future. Um, and so there should be some consideration to that as far as how do we move forward? Like figuring out the, the exact way to mitigate this if there's any, um, and if there's not, how do we make you know mutual agreement between both parties so that this works out? But I mean, a lot of people here I think really enjoy the fact that there's really high quality well water up where they're at, and that's one thing, as a water operator, my house has its own little water plant. It's something I'm very proud of, and it's something I do not want to put at risk without having the proper studying done before on how, what kind of impact this could have, especially considering the space with the amount of people that we're talking about here, it's very small and condensed. And so that opposes its own problems on its ability to leach into the, into the well. Um, and on top of that, just to, as a side note, there was the first case of somebody dying last year in the state of Illinois from a bacterial infection we haven't seen since the Civil War. So on his property was a latrine from the Civil War, and he died from a bacterial infection that they could not identify, and the CDC had to get involved. So this is something we should be taking, you know, some serious thought about. The well, I think, for most people is, I think you're hearing everybody, is the most important component of this. So um, that's all I have. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate that. Sir, at the end, I'd, if we could meet, I'd like to, if you could try to figure out that name, because I, I just want to compare it to the name I spoke to today as well. Who, um, whoever you, that person is, that's who we all need to talk to and, and figure out, get to the bottom of the well issue, because that's that seems to be the majority of the questions that I had read and the majority of the phone calls that I had funneled. So it's a really good observation, um, and that's why I did reach out to the IEPA mm -hmm. and in the, ID, in the Illinois Department of Public Health, and you know I did request their permission this evening. I, I don't think they had enough lead time to make it. They did also mention, though, that it's not their jurisdiction either. But the Illinois Imp Environmental Protection Agency, they are the subject matter experts on this situation. Okay, So all the things you raised I thought were really well said, and I agree with just pretty much all of them, but it's the same thing I said as well. It, there's a lot of variables that need to be evaluated to make that decision. Um, I took it upon myself just to kind of look, and this is not a definitive answer for every acre of land in this area, but it is a high clay area. Now I had a nice conversation with another resident today where we had different information. So the information I have is where there's a lot of high clay contact, that's good. You mentioned the ion exchange. You know, the pH of the soil, all these different things are what will keep the viruses and bacteria that will kind of stick to the soil. And what we really want is a slow migration from the surface-ish, six feet and under, to the aquifer. So that's what will make things more safe, but I can't answer all those questions because it's not in my purview. It's just the information I was able to find for you guys. What we really would want to focus on is who issues the license to have the issue, and then what are the rules to get the said license? So that is currently not in the act. So I, just to mirror what the gentleman from New Lenox said earlier in a different component is, you want to revisit that to see if you can get that changed and see that we would like to see a little more oversight in the engineering and environmental impact to whatever um, you know, the property is. So that's the best answer I think I can give you. Yeah. I think as a follow-up, these are all well questions, so thanks for your uh, feedback. 
was whether or not there could be any monitoring, whether or not there's regulation in place that would require that, and if there isn't, then maybe we need to address, they need to address that, the county. So, to, to, I can't answer that. Uh, you guys are in charge of regulation. Oh, sorry. Um, you guys are in charge of regulation under the Clean Water Act. So the way the Clean Water Act is, it falls on you guys just like you have to hire water and wastewater operators to run your treatment plants. Um, on a county level, when you're doing things like sewer and septic, those regulations, those all fall under the Clean Water Act, but eventually fall under the responsibility of the village itself. And generally, there's an issue with understanding that because as water, wastewater people, we don't get paid a lot, so it's not like we're out there trying to you know, figure out every leeway of how the law works, I make sure that my plan operates correctly and that the stream's clean. Um, but when it comes down to who's kind of in charge of that, if you read that, it says should and shall, and it represents whoever's doing whatever kind of work that's underneath you know, that Clean Water Act. And so when it comes down to who regulates it, it is you. However, the EPA does not generally get involved unless someone calls. Like if you just start building a treatment plant, someone's gonna call and the Illinois EPA is gonna say, you guys didn't come to us and pull a permit. Or if you don't have a grease trap program in your town and you have a sewer discharge on the ground, the EPA is gonna say, what did you do to regulate this? So really when it comes down to the regulation, it's kind of a hard area because they put you in the responsible seat, but generally unless someone calls and complains, they're not, none's, you know, none's the wiser, right? So, I mean, that's the other end of this that makes it difficult. So. It's confusing just to say the least. Um, for the Will County Health Department in my division, Environmental Health, we do not have that jurisdiction that you're yeah, referring yeah. to. Mm -hmm. That is just not accurate, and it's not to attack you in any way. Well, no, I'm saying that you no, but I understand. Um, let's, I'm going to try to answer a couple of the questions. As far as the, the sampling, what we recommend to any private well owner is that you should have your well sampled at least once a year. Okay, and if you want to take it to our lab, we're an accredited lab, we will test it for total and fecal coliform and nitrates. Um, I think we could do fluoride and maybe a couple other small ones. We do not have the capability to test for individual pathogens like viruses and bacteria or volatile chemicals of that nature. But that's a way to start. But I don't know if that's exactly what the question meant. Um, so what they may have is you could have to, you'd have to research a private lab to have that water analyzed. And then anytime you submit a sample, you have to tell the lab what the sample for. So you want to probably just list out a certain pathogens that you think would be a concern. And then you can do that, but you it would have to research see how much it costs. I can add something to that for you to put people at ease. If you're testing for fecal coliform, if that is not present or is present in a reasonable amount, um, most, I would say 99.9% .9 of all other bacteria is not present. So when it comes to treating water at a wastewater plant, that's what we test for. That's the hardest thing to kill. So instead of going out and trying to find someone to test for every virus under the sun, understand that that's how the water that goes to the creek, the water that comes from public water systems, that's how it all gets tested. Just throwing that out there, sorry. No, I appreciate that's a great answer actually because there is total coliform, there's fecal coliform, and fecal coliform is more of an indicator of human waste. Um, to uh, just kind of address something else you said, um, anytime, and all of you in this room know that have a septic field, um, what we do have jurisdiction in is the enforcement of when a well is drilled and when a septic system is installed. So what our department is tasked with, we work in partnership with the state of Illinois, we follow their codes, we have our own ordinances as well. Most of the ordinances do address more fees and we just kind of use the state law as our base. So if you're gonna put in a septic system, we're gonna do a soil evaluation first. So we're gonna rate the soil. Okay, see, is it in a suitable soil to put in that type of system? So we do all that work. Uh, we have a geologist on staff, we have several sanitarians, we work with the licensed septic contractors and the licensed well drillers. And then we inspect that process as it's installed. Um, for the wells, when a new well is drilled, we require that it is sampled and analyzed and interpreted for every new well. Now, that doesn't answer your question about the cemetery. But as I mentioned, we do that for septic fields and wells and we just don't have the jurisdiction about the cemetery. If I may, that's some really good information. Um, 
However, what's been applied for here, at least by this owner, hasn't been either a well or a septic or a mechanical system or any of that. So there's no permit issued by this health department. It brings me back to the same thing I've been discussing from the beginning, and that if this were a special use rather than a permitted use, the county board, with the recommendations on land use, the health department, and everyone else could place whatever conditions they need necessary for monitoring, testing, or whatever else it may be. It gets back to the same thing as far as how you, as far as how you control it, I'm sorry. Because that's the only way that you're going to address that here. Because no one's applied to him for a well permit, no one's applied for a septic permit, no one's applied for a mechanical system. And that's where his jurisdiction comes in. Melissa. So the last series of questions I have is um, about taxes, uh, property values. So concern about property values, concern about impact of livability of their land. Um, there was no more well questions. I seemed, it felt like so there was. They were all very general well questions about impact to the well. And I think that the public health department has answered that. Uh, generally speaking, I, I, I don't know what the steps will be following this meeting. So if I can have a follow-up question, if it's not his jurisdiction, jurisdiction because it hasn't come to him, whose jurisdiction is it? It's, it's not Homer Glenn because it's not in Homer Glenn. I mean, like who? Part of the project plan before it gets started, an impact study. I don't think that so. Is. That is a really good question. We don't have a good answer because we don't enforce the act. The agency, the Illinois Department of Financial and Professional Regulations, enforces that act, and do they do not require at this time those types of studies? So, because there's not a study required. Everyone who has a well, we don't know the effects. They won't We're know the effects pigs. of what is We're happening. Guinea pigs. Correct. Sorry, that's the truth. Which is what we Cass is getting much, at. Because I, uh, right. And if you could give us just one second, Kevin's yeah, got I, some really. Please go ahead. So I did have some information um, from gov.uk. So the United Kingdom has actually done a lot of studies on this. So this is straight from gov.uk. It's an article published April 1st, 2022 called Protecting Groundwater from Human Burials. Basically, in the United Kingdom, they do not allow any a burial within 250 meters of a well. Um, you, can do, you can look the article up, but in addition, it also says, cemeteries located in the following places present an exceptional risk to the environment and human health. And it says, any cemetery within 250 meters from a well, borehole, or spring use of supply water for human consumption. So I know there's a lot of articles, different opinions, but I mean, this is a pretty reputable source of the government of UK and their um, environment agency. In addition to that, the World Health Organization says that um, no, no burial should be within 250 meters of, of a well as well. There's a lot of, there are studies out there from uh, respected sources on this, on this issue, but you, you are right. From anything I could find, I couldn't find any oversight from Illinois, EPA, nothing in, in our state. When you say burial, are you referencing this type of burial or are you talking about a, a casket burial? Is it any type of burial? It's, it's any type of burial from, from my understanding. You know, there's, there's bacteria, you know, in the human body. So. so I have that study in front of me, the World Health Organization one, and I'm just going to read the conclusion, okay? I'm not disagreeing with you, okay? I'm just going to read the conclusion. In conclusion, aquifer pollution can greatly, I'm sorry, can vary greatly according to the geological strata and cemetery layout and management. Surface drains will intercept most surface runoff water entering a site from outside <clears throat> before any serious contamination takes place. The pollution potential from cemeteries is present, but in well-managed cemeteries with suitable soil conditions and drainage arrangements, it, the risk is probably slight. Despite that, they still the draft continues years. given below could be used to site and design future well-managed cemetery and it lists all the things you just mentioned. For example, human and animal remains must not be buried within 250 meters. So, or, not and it also with. says even potentially more based on yeah. the soil samples. So you, all you this being said, it's a really good study. It's incomplete. They acknowledge some of the, the deficiencies in their own study with soil categorization and the depth of the unsaturated layer. So 
it's, it's, it's nice information. Our biggest issue here, our biggest issue here is it's not written in the law in the state of Illinois. Agreed. And that's what I've been trying to answer to anyone Agreed. who will talk to me. Correct. And I wouldn't, yes, and I, I spoke with you yesterday and I gave you, I referenced this article. Yeah. It, it does, you did, it does say about that 250 meters, it does say this distance may be greater if the site is a steep hydrogeological gradient or the velocity of groundwater flow within an aquifer is rapid. Um, and, and you're right. We so that's what we're talking study. about. Correct. There's so many, when, if any of you guys want to read this study, it's not painfully long, mm -hmm. it's not overly scientific. Um, there's some tough words in there, trust me. But it goes over all the categories of the things we just talked about. pH of the soil, how a body decomposes, what bacteria and viruses are produced in those bodies. Um, there is definitely risks, more risks with embalmed bodies than bodies that are not embalmed. There's considerable risk or incomplete data about the coffins and what they're constructed of and what they're painted with and the hinges that are used to open and close said coffin. Um, there's a lot of information that isn't considered. From, my, from what I can find. Now, there might be different rules. It's done by different people, but it's not been presented to me in the time period I've been given to look into it. Ms. My, uh, Mrs. Myers, you were, wait, um, I asked Ms. Myers, she asked to come up to the microphone. You can come up to the microphone next if you'd like. I, I think um, I agree, and I've tried to do a little bit of research and stuff too. I saw, I, I think what's happening here is we're talking about generally about cemeteries. And in this case, this is not a traditional burial. This is a, what is considered an open air uh, without the coffins, the caskets, the vaults. And we're also talking uh, about three to four feet depth versus the deep. I have to stop you. That's categorically incorrect. Okay. The depth of all these graves, and I confirm this with the cemetery that's going Good. to do this, is six to six and a half feet. Okay. So that's good. very important yes. because the depth from the surface could affect contamination, decomposition, Absolutely. lots of different factors. Absolutely, and good to know because that's why this meeting is taking place because we aren't being told and we don't know. But my point was... Well, and also you had mentioned that clay uh, was better, and I have read reports with who and whatever. Where we spoke earlier, right? No, we didn't. Oh, was it you and I? Okay, no, it was someone else. So we, it I had another discussion. Else, oh, yes. <laughs> Thanks, where Jason. it should be a sandy uh, uh, base rather than a clay, and that clay isn't good. So the whole point is we don't know. We don't have the oversight, and I would like to go back then to. Um, um, all of a sudden, I'm, I'm drawing a blank of your name. Cass. Cass, sorry, Cass. What Cass had brought up about the regulations with the county and making changes. And while maybe it would be broad to make changes to all cemeteries, perhaps the land use and those involved could consider uh, making an exception for a, an, an open air type burial or making that more of a uh, stipulation as to ground studies, different things that need to take place before permitting would take place. You know, maybe that would be a quicker path because I think a, a month uh, for changing uh, land use is very ambitious. And, and again, I've watched stuff languish in the state's attorney's office and all different committees and stuff. So really, we don't know how long, it, it is our executive has said, we really don't know how long changing this could be. But I'm thinking that if it was more um, centralized on this different type of, of burial, that it might move a little, quickly, little quicker through the county, that, that's all. Thanks, I really appreciate that. I would just caution all of us to be careful of our language. And what I mean by that is when we say a traditional burial, that depends on who you're talking to. I do agree, I, I, for lack of a better word. Yeah, I understand. And honestly, it matters not to me what, what religion a cemetery is right. or anything. I think uh, from my perspective and from my neighbors, our biggest concern is it is not what we traditionally know uh, Cemeteries broadly addressed, it, it's not something that is as common as the other types with vaults and things like that. So uh, if anybody was offended, I meant no offense at all. And would not matter to me one way or another if it was Muslim or whatever it is, I actually would 
prefer to have a cemetery as a neighbor. Our concerns are for the groundwater and for our wells. Uh, that is the biggest concern that we have with uh, moving into this and with the lack of ability to regulate because we're not, you're admitting here now that nobody's really looking at this part. We're looking at parking, we're looking at basic things, or your hands are tied, you have no authority. So this is a very unique situation and probably because just like you said, you know, our, our world is evolving, is going to be changing you know, uh, and be more prevalent uh, as a possibility in the future. I think it's a really good point. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. I there agree. was another question, um, someone stood up. Maybe not. Yeah, so So I think it's a, it's a great question and statement. Um, I agree with a lot of what you just said. Um, in the World Health Organization report that we've referenced today, uh, I can't quote it, I'm not gonna go look through the pages, but there hasn't been any definitive outbreaks associated with groundwater contamination due to cemeteries. Now we could take that a couple of ways. One, it's not an issue. Two, it is an issue, it just hasn't been investigated properly. Um, three, we don't have enough data. So I think it just enhances what you just said, is that more information is needed. And we just don't have it. I mean, and to be honest too, I've only had about a week to look at this. So, and again, it's not my subject matter expertise, but I wanna do this because I wanna make sure that it's safe as well. I I completely appreciate what you're saying. I just don't have that authority. So it's I, as simple as that. I think that's, excuse me. So that's exactly the question, thank you, Christina. That is actually the question that, the reason why I brought this, to, this meeting together is I wanna find out not necessarily who's responsible, but who has authority to look into, I mean, I'm looking at a room full of people and that one woman just spoke up. I don't wanna look at a bunch of, you know, people that are, we're putting in harm's way either. I mean, how do we know? And it's not the type of burial, because that was why I was asking. Like, I don't back up, I don't have a well. So if a cemetery was built behind me, it, it doesn't affect me either way. So if it was a casket burial or if it was a, a natural burial, I actually think the natural burial thing is kind of neat, I mean, makes more sense, it does seem more healthy uh, for the environment, but when you back up to a well, I'm not so necessarily sure either burial, it's not the type of burial, it's a cemetery in itself, backing up to property owners that have a well. I want those answers, it's not my jurisdiction, it's not even in Homer Glen, but I, these are, these are the Homer Glen residents that are being affected by this. So ma'am, I have a question, uh, and as this meeting comes to an end, who up there, who's gonna step up to the plate now and say, I'm gonna be in charge of this and take care of this question. I'm gonna take care of this, and I'm gonna take care of this. But like the road commissioner, 
Are you gonna, who's gonna check the roads all the time? Are you gonna put your information out there so you can, can be reported to you? Mr. Balich, are you gonna step up and this is in your jurisdiction, in your district, are you gonna take this to the zoning committee? You've been good enough to run this meeting, who from Homer Township is going to step up? I've been a, I've been a mayor all about five days. <laughs> I, I'm doing the best I can, but... Sir, I already said that we are... Jim Richards, my counterpart, and we've talked about this, and Frankie Pretzel, we are bringing that to the county board. I've already said it like two or three times. Okay, so so we, we will be bringing it to the county board May 9th. Well, well, there, but we want to know your our elected representatives who's going to step up to the plate and say, I'm going to spearhead this for all of you. I'll step up to the plate since you're the Homer Glen residents. I, I will do what I can to protect every single resident in this room. I have to, I, I will. I will give information to everyone that is fed to me, and that's what I've been doing for the last four yeah. days that I've had this information. I've so, been trying. So the access permit, if this goes back, if, it, if they develop more than five acres out there, the access permit is, it, it's over. Because anything over and above that that we don't have a permit for, I'm not going to allow them access to my roadways, period. All I was told is they're putting a road down the middle of it with a cul-de-sac. That's it. No buildings, no, no, nothing else. If they continue to violate that and there's more stuff they're going to build, the permit's going to be pulled or the bond's going to be increased to a higher level to cover my, my costs for repairs of my roadways. What's the load of that I believe it's seven tons. It, it is seven tons. If I could just jump in as far as what your concerns were, as far as what the gentleman over here brought up, as far as groundwater and all those type of things, there are two different things. There's from the land use side about making sure that this is not a permitted use anymore, with the balance of the property, and that would take the text amendment we've all been talking about. And then, if it were a special use that were allowed within the category, then you could attach conditions to it. The conditions can be anything. Land use department attaches all kinds of proposed conditions, and the county board adopts them when they uh, approve a special use permit, if they're going to approve it, and that can include anything. It could include groundwater monitoring. It could include anti-erosion measures. They include all kinds of different things. Am I right, Mr. DeBoer? Yeah. So that's the key, right there. So what you're saying is that you're going to take it. <laughs> well, it's not, I, I wish I could, but I'm neither on the county board nor am I the Hover Township supervisor. <laughs> Neither am I. In Richmond, <laughs> Frankie Pretzel, and myself, Miss, I'm speaking, Jim Richmond, this gentleman right here, Frankie Pretzel and myself are on the county board. Frankie's the chair of land use, and we will make sure that it goes to the land use committee to get a text amendment. Now, I don't know if the whole board will vote for it. That's something that's a different issue, but we will move it forward. And I don't know how many times I will repeat it, but the three of us agree to do that. We've already talked to the chairman of the board, and the chairman of the board already, already agreed to put it on the agenda. So it will be on the agenda. It's not an if, it will be. Tuesday the 9th, May 9th, at 10.30. And if you can't go there, you can probably watch it on WebEx. So uh, okay. uh, go to the Will County Board and you can find a WebEx. You can watch it on the computer. Can, can you... um, there was a question from the, the woman that stood up in the middle of the area. Yes, um, you asked where the answers to the questions would be posted. Um, I, I'll work with um, the village manager and they've been taking notes over here and we will post them to the websites, Facebook, where, you know, uh, where would we post them? Probably mostly on our website would be the most. I will share with the township the information also so they can post on township for any township residents. If anybody else would like any notes we, are, we took tonight, we can share those also, no problem. If, if I could jump in one, just one more time and thanks Steve for, and Jim and Frankie for bringing that forward and agreeing to bring that forward. Um, 
when they bring it forward, it's just like Steve said, is that it's gonna take a majority of the county board to pass that and ultimately that would be presented if that were to pass with 14 votes to the Will County Executive seated to my left. But these are three votes, okay? Look at your county board jurisdiction, okay? Go to their website. Look at what those districts look like. There are different districts that cross Homer Glen, Homer Township, Lockport Township, New Lenox Township. You're represented by more than just these people. And it'll be up to all of you to get and talk to you and share your concerns with those other county board members because three votes not enough, okay? So again, I implore you to do that as well. Um, just for clarification, the land use meeting, again, is May 9th at 10.30, and the county board meeting is May 18th at 9.30. 302 North Chicago. 302 North, 302 North Chicago. And, uh, Christina. Right, yeah. And, and you know, to, to, to back up what Cass said is, I, I've already had conversations with other county board members on this situation. Trust me, this is not going just with us three. There's already been conversations that have had. They're just as upset because it could happen in their district. So this is not something that anybody up here is taking lightly and or the balance of the county board that I've talked to already. They're just as frustrated. So that's all. Thank you, Cass, for bringing it up. The gentleman has a question standing up in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> They're shaking their head. No, I. As long as we provide emergency service and access to the site, that's as far as my jurisdiction goes, and we do. I can't uh, on the private property part. I can't cover that, but that should have been. That's part of the Will County review too, is making sure the emergency vehicles can get in and out. To the woman in the back. Yeah. What was the first question again? Well, they, they provided us with a with, with a, a plan that showed a road with a cul-de-sac. Okay, no buildings or anything like that. So the access permit has conditions. If the conditions are violated, then we pull the permit, and they don't have access to the site. So if you don't have access to the site, guess what? You can't build nothing. Well, whatever was presented to the land use department and whatever was uh, approved by the land use department is as far as they can go. If they go past that, the land use department, I don't know, they have a violation policy. I don't know if it's a fine or what it is, but it, it, if, if my access permit is violated, it's pulled. It's that simple. I, I can only suspend it if, is it a special use permit, this project? Or is it a PUD? No, it's, it's permitted it's use. Not. Mm -hmm. um, if they reopen the case and it's you know and it's put in limbo or it's put in in a delay situation and it's postponed, the permit's going to be postponed as well. As soon as I find out on that day, that's it. But I don't think it's a case either, though. Correct? Yeah. No. Is is that okay? <laughs> is that was that? Did I answer your question? Cass, can you answer that? If I could jump in, or you go ahead, Brian. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> this first phase of development, again, as I stated earlier, is for five acres of earthwork and up to 25,000 square feet of impervious surface. There is no building plan that has been submitted for this property. Uh, that would trigger a whole slew of codes that would be applied, possibly a zoning change, 
depending on what the building was to be used for, a review by the Fire Protection District, another approval by the Highway Commissioner. So at the moment, there is no building plans that have been submitted to our office for this property. The only thing that's been authorized is the development of earthwork and impervious surface. I think her question is though, on their website, if you watch the video on the website, I think it actually specifically says this property was, was specifically zoned for this burial site and that they do plan to have a building. So I... <laughs> so... So I guess what they're saying is right now they're only permitted right now for the, the earth movement, correct? That, that's correct. The department doesn't have any control of what they put on their website. They're only authorized for the earthwork uh, that was associated with the site development permit, which includes no buildings. So even though they show it on their website, that's a whole other permitting process that could require a zoning change. It depends on what the use was for and would possibly require notification to surrounding property owners. It would involve the fire district. It would be a whole new site development permit, a whole new building permit, and the highway commissioner again would have to approve the access. Okay, we have about five minutes left of this meeting. Um, Dan? First, I want to say thank you for collaboratively getting together and trying to aid us all this Second, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but the text amendment that we're talking about would only change things in the future. That doesn't mean the text amendment that would be made would stop this project, correct? Well, ultimately, the state's attorney would render an opinion and to have to defend any ordinance, which is what you're talking about, the text amendment is an ordinance, amending an ordinance that was adopted, okay? And as to property that there has not yet been per site development permits issued, i.e. the other 35 or 34 odd acres of this property, whether that's applicable to not, that or not, would ultimately be up to a judge if there were suit brought in that, okay? Ultimately, because if the county board adopts an ordinance, if the county executive signs it, the state's attorney is obligated to defend that ordinance. I'm so. talking based on how they started this project. If we come up with the text amendment, that amendment, if, if it affects anything that they've already applied for, the amendment would only be for things in the future, not for what they've started. But you're right, if there's certain portions of it that have not been approved, then that text amendment would approve. Well, but we're, I'm not sure where you're at with that. With, where I'm at with that is this very simply, okay? They have a site development permit for five acres, am I right, of this 39.2 acre site, okay? A, would that text amendment and the new process apply to that five acres, one question. B, is it enforceable against the balance of the property for which no permits even been applied for? Second question, my answer is the same for both, what I already said. Ultimately, the county board adopts ordinances. If they're challenged, the state's attorney defends them in court. That's the case, okay? As to what the state's attorney's opinion would be and what he would render to the county board in telling them what their likelihood is or what the enforceability is, I can't tell you that right now. Okay, um, we'll take two more questions. The lady in the back in the blue. Access road with the cul-de-sac. That's all. So, that's the only. That's all they can bring in. That's it. So, then the door closes. That's it. So they, they over, over and above that roadway, I'm not approving anything until the land use does. Brian, do it ends at five there? acres. That's it. The door's closed. Yes, and like I said, the, the bond covers only building the roadway and the cul-de-sac. That's it. Nothing for any buildings or anything over and above the five-acre site development permit. That's all. So they will be allowed to 
just to build the, en the entrance road. That's it. Brian, did you have anything to add? In, I, impervious surface is anything that water doesn't penetrate, and by the county's code, that does include gravel and permeable pavers. So this project does include asphalt, so there will be a paved entranceway and a paved driveway. Okay, I do apologize. We're going to wrap this meeting up because we were limited to two hours. Um, if you guys have additional questions and you want to fill out the um, index cards over there, we'll do the best we can to answer the questions on time or in a timely matter. Um, I, they, I, I don't know who's going to stay to answer any other questions. I do have to leave, but thank you guys for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you for the hospitality and working together.